Tough one. Tethered by a four-foot cable and forced to work together to reach rescue. I'm done. Oh. This is a survival challenge like no other. Send me home. Come on! Someone take this off! Uh, my name's Nick Rhodes, 29 years old. I'm a gold prospector in Alaska. I would have to say that I am a bona fide redneck. I'm a professional hunter, and I've been an avid adventurer. I'm confident that I'm going to do well. It's not every day you get this opportunity. Which way is north or east? My name is Jameson Mercier. I'm 32 years old from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and I'm a licensed clinical social worker. I am happily married. We have three beautiful children. You know, we're just living it up. This is definitely going to be interesting. How's it going, man? Nick Rhodes. Jameson. Good to meet you, brother. How are you? I'm good. Good, good. Let's do it, man. Once locked together, Jameson and Nick can't be unlocked until they reach extraction in 10 days. I hate to tell you, I'm a cuddly man, so. <laughs> it's, gonna be, it's gonna be cold at night. It's gonna be cold at night. I'll, I'll rock, paper, scissor you for big spoon, little spoon. Oh, man. Yeah. I, I'm, uh, I'm good with back-to-back, -back, man. Okay, back-to-back's cool, too, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's break this puppy open and see what we got. Uh, okay. Canteen, that's a possibility. Actually, definitely consider that canteen. Yeah. They left us with some matches. <laughs> Nice. Three, six, nine, twelve. Eleven. Eleven matches. That's like one per day, bro. I know what I'm confident with. Let's go with the matches, bro. All right, dude, that's your call, man. I think Nick's definitely confident. I mean, as long as the person leading knows what they're doing, I got no problem. You know, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of going to lean towards the knife as opposed to the hatchet. I was going to say the same thing. So we got the canteen. This uh, fancy blade here. All right, and uh, our trusty matches. We should probably get a move on at times winding down. I agree. Nick and Jameson have 10 days to reach the extraction point, 43 miles away. Between them and rescue are dense, disorienting forests, sheer waterfalls, and some of the deadliest pit vipers in North America. Lived in Florida all your life? Actually, I was born in Haiti. Oh, really? Never would I imagine in a million years that someone like me, little Haitian boy, would be tethered to a uh, redneck. You have much outdoor experience? Uh, the beach. The beach? If you need help with sandcastles, I'm your guy. Uh, definitely not what I was expecting. He has uh, very little to no outdoor experience. I have a lot of experience just in the sun <laughs> on the beach. <laughs> What were they saying about your partner? Did they have any concerns? My wife says, baby, what if he's a redneck? <laughs> I said, that means I get to come back home. I'll survive. Whoa, whoa! Ah. Huh. I got you. I got you. You all right? Yeah. That's a You know, Jameson likes to shrug it off like it's nothing. You know, that fall could have killed us. You know, Jameson really needs to wake up right now. We still have to get firewood. We have to find something to eat. If not, you know, we damn sure need water. And then that's going to take up quite a bit as it is. In a survival situation like this, urgency is the most important thing in my book. Until we have a roof over our head, water in our systems, and food on a fire, we're in danger. Let's say we build a lean-to right here, from this tree to that tree. Thunder. Oh, yeah. Right now, it's not a time to take our time. It could start pouring on us at any moment. Jameson's laid back, just, you know, do to do just kind of go at a slow pace. Nick can be a little condescending. He's I, not the first person yeah. I've met who's like that. So it actually, half the time, I don't even hear it. Come on, baby, keep burning. Keep burning. Oh, yeah. My goal is to keep this fire going all night. But I mean, what if, uh, I mean, what if it were to go out? We let the fire die out, 
it, the bottom falls out of the sky, we get absolutely drenched, we get hypothermic, we're done. Either. James, you have to keep blowing on the fire. Our river's already wet. We don't have enough for this. If we keep this going, we're <laughs> Luckily, our fire held, but ain't nobody feeling good right now. If we could use the logs he's sawing while he's asleep on the fire, we'd be warm and toasty. I didn't sleep at all. My partner says I slept. I disagree. That was... Nord, you sounded that, like a chainsaw. That was uh, some shut-eye. That's what I call that. Well, God, I'd hate to see what it sounds like when you get sound sleep. We're going to try to follow this river down into a bigger river and find a campsite. Careful. These rocks are slippery like nothing you've ever imagined. Yeah, hold it, hold it. And as cool as this river is, man, it's a whole lot of work. Man, I'm dead serious, but you want to keep your feet in front of you. Trying to get comfortable to get some sleep. Tonight is by far the coldest night out. The sleep bug has hit him rather hard, and he just hasn't gave a about the fire. Having somebody sleep a great majority of the time when they're by the campfire and feeling like the burden is on you to keep the fire going and keeping everybody warm. You know, I tried waking him up. And he just kind of mumbled and moved a little. Jameson has me extremely worried. For him. At some point in time, I'm going to have to question your will to survive. We're going to try to figure out sleeping arrangements and fire watch tonight. We can either take shifts and deal with this or get it flaming hot, doze off for a little bit and then we'll just build it up again. Right now, it seems like your attitude is, ah, fire goes out, whatever. Literally out here, the elements will kill you. There is no place for complacency and laxness. And if it goes out, we'll just build because it. Because you're we'll supposed just, to be watching it. We'll just build it up and, and I'm then. asleep. I'll be pissed. I got first watch on the fire here while Nick is trying to get some shut eye. James. Oh. Hey, man. Fire's dead, dude. We need to go get firewood. Dude, chill out. Chill out. Come on. Shit, man. Dude, come on. I said in a minute. Come on, dude. Seriously. Stop pulling on this. We can do the tug of war deal, or you can just get up and seriously, man. Let's wake the hell up. Let's go. Come on, man. We're stuck together. We have to do oh, together. Yeah, so come do. on. Let's wake the hell up. Let's go. Yo. Come on. I'm done playing. It's Ain't nobody playing. Don't yoke on this like that no more. Are you gonna let that tether go? And I'm gonna get up. But just know that won't fly no more. What are we gonna do? Well, I say we go get firewood. You wanna lay there and cuddle in the sand. Every, every minute is fire, 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 fire. The f I tell you what, you don't complain about that fire when you're laying next to it snoring. Fire, fire, fire. Wasn't so hard to get up and collect a little firewood now, was it? What are you going to say? A little more, a little more. I got it. You never have enough firewood. You never have enough firewood. That's right. I heard you complain once, unless it was getting cold. Look, man, I'm not intentionally being an ass about the fire. This is just the number one thing that I find the most importance in. I got no problem helping you. We're tethered. But you got to come at me correct, man, because that ain't going to work. 
I promise you I won't do that again. My bad, man. That's cool. Good. No, we're good. All right, cool. We remembered that our canteen has these little links on it. Hold the lid on. I just broke one of the links. I mean, it would at least get stuck in their throat. We've been using the insides of my shoelaces for fishing line and you just got a makeshift fishing pole. Dude, salamander, salamander. Fish bait, baby. Fish bait. You done killing it? Yeah, he's dead. I've been hunting and trapping since I was eight, so we're going on 21 years now. Nick has talked a big game about killing this deer and killing that gator, and we hadn't even caught a mouse. How much time do you think we should give this one? Who knows? They, they could just be in a different area right now. We uh, tried many ways to fish. Didn't happen. There goes one right there. Listen. I found one small crawfish, and I just grabbed him. Take those guys off and pinchers. We shared a, a half a, <laughs> half half a, a two-inch crawfish, yeah. You know, but in these circumstances, even just the tiniest morsel is a big boost. Not a lot. A wild onion. Oh, man. Holy cow. We're on this grab hunting expedition. And while looking for some grub, we find these bad boys here. Wild onions, man. Wild onions. Oh, man. You know how good this is going to be over the fire? Yeah, I do, actually. One small onion provides roughly 30 calories, a meager serving for the starving duo. Oh, my god, the heart of the onion, the center. So good. Nom, 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 nom. Nick and Jameson shift gears, hunker down under a rock overhang, and plan to stay put in this new camp until they find the nutrients they need to push toward rescue. Just to set some traps, at, or a fishing line, or both, even. We made the rest of those links in our top into hooks. I took all my remaining boot laces and pulled out all the innards for, uh, to make a trout line. If I counted right, I think we got almost 10 hooks. Let's go catch some fish, man. I'm absolutely starving. So the idea behind this is instead of using five fishing poles, is we're just going to use one line with five hooks. And I'm just tying this hook to the trout line. We've got five of our hooks. All baited. All baited, all tied on, tied to a rock. Nice. Yeah, dude, that worked great. Let's get out of here, let them calm back down. Come back first thing in the morning and check it. If there's a raccoon in the area, I guarantee you, he'll be walking up and down this log. He'll walk through like this, and it'll catch on his front legs and snare him. So now it's just a, you know, it's a waiting game. Cross your fingers and let's go collect firewood and uh, get some sleep. First thing in the morning, we'll check in the snares. Let's hope. All right, man. Let's go. On a mission to find food, Nick sets snares and plants a five-hook fishing line. With roughly 10 miles to go, it is imperative the guys score some protein to make the final stretch to rescue. I'm thinking we get up, go check our snare, and then uh, after that, we'll go down and check our trout line. Sounds like a plan. Awesome. That's awesome. Oh, man, that is crazy. Dude, that, that really worked. Let's go get that fish. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> this is awesome. Awesome is not the word. Ooh. Ah. Dude, I almost eat it raw. Showing that fish some love, eh? This thing right here makes us a team, bro. Oh, yeah, no <laughs> doubt about it. Mm -hmm. 
That's good, man. It obviously wasn't horrible, so it's definitely worth a second. You just let the meat slide down the back of your throat. You'll be fine. I'm eating a possum. I'm ecstatic. Hell, he don't get no more home cooking than this. I kid you not, it tasted like pork chop. I mean, it absolutely positively tasted like pork. The mood shifted, and uh, it helped us out a lot. The main strategy is to just to continue following this river downstream. Exhausted, man. Yeah. Welcome to the club. We're getting closer. We got to be getting closer. Let's keep rolling. Hopefully, we make it before we totally exhaust whatever energy we have left. I can't handle it anymore. Extraction point, where are you? It's got to be here somewhere. Huh. Hell yeah! It's a oh, bridge, man. dude. It makes it worth it. Hell yeah! Civilization, man. Oh. Yeah. Hey, boys. You guys been looking for these? Oh, oh, ha <laughs> ha! Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Let's go, let's go. Dude, have yeah, at it. Oh, boy. I almost just want to chuck this thing in the river. Hot coffee in a shower. Hot anything. You know, I, I definitely like think I've made a lifelong friend uh, with Jameson through this experience. You know, you have to when you're tethered. But uh, I realized that uh, I'm condescending at times and uh, got to have my way. I started to open up and change that, and I uh, plan on continuing to do so. Uh, 10 days in the wild, cold, wet, hungry. I learned a lot about myself. I learned that when you decide you want to do something, no matter how hard, no matter how difficult it is, you shouldn't stop. You should just keep fighting. I'm capable of doing that. I'll tell you what, I'll never forget the experience. 